Everybody raise your hands to the Lord. Raise your hands to God. Close your eyes right now. Hallelujah. Ito po ang aming panalangin, O Diyos. That regardless of our situations, regardless of what season that we are in, that your name be magnified in our lives. Ang pangalan niyo po ang maitanghal sa aming mga buhay. Kristo Jesus, kayo po ang malwalhati sa aming mga buhay. God, With the raising of our hands and the raising of our hearts, Lord, we submit and surrender to you. Lord, we admit that without you, Lord God, we are powerless. We are unworthy, Lord. We cannot do anything, Lord. But with you, Lord, we can do all things because you are the one who strengthens us. You are the one who sustains us. You are the one who holds us in the palm of your hand and gives us strength to strength. You have opened the heavens, Lord, for your people and for your children. And you have showered your grace, your blessings, your comfort, your peace, your joy, Lord God. Salamat po, hindi niyo po pinagkakaitang inyong presensya sa inyong mga anak. And every time that we come into your presence, Lord, you speak to us. Pinapalakas niyo po kami. Nararapat po kayo ng lahat ng papuri kalwalhatian, kapangyarihan. Nararapat po kayo, Panginoon. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy, Lord. Worthy of all honor. Worthy of all praise. Worthy of all glory. Hallelujah to your name. Come on, give Him praise. Give Him praise. We praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah to your name. Lift your voices and praise His name. we thank you for Sundays. We thank you, Lord God, that you have made this time available. And Lord, kayo pa po ang nagdala po sa amin sa lugar na ito, sa inyong presensya. Niniwala po ako, Lord, sa kalakasan nyo, it would fill your people. I pray, God, for peace right now that transcends all understanding, especially for those who have come here with burdens in their hearts. I pray, God, for healing as well for those who are sick, for our loved ones who are sick, Father. I also pray, Lord, for comfort, for joy, joy from heaven, Lord. Yung hindi po galing sa mundong ito. So bless your people, God, right now. Thank you, Lord, for what you're gonna do. You're a God who's mighty to save, mighty to deliver. To your glory, all praise. In your name we pray. Amen, amen. Give Him praise. Give Him praise. God is worthy of all our praises. Give Him praise. God never fails. Whenever we come to His presence, He fills us, He strengthens us. Nawala po yung pagod, yung bigat, napapalitan po yan ng kanyang kalakasan. Say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'd like to welcome once again everybody sa ating pong uh, Sunday worship celebration. Welcome to His Life City Church. And we are the church that loves God, makes disciples, and impacts our world. We're so glad that you are here. And so before you take your seats, kindly say to the person next to you, pakisabi sa kanya, ang ganda mo, ang guwapo mo, masaya ako nandito ka. Come on, say it with a smile on your face. <laughs> Masaya ako, andito ka. Amen. So we can take our seats now. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. 
I'd like to welcome as well, pati po yung mga kasama po natin sa may multipurpose tent, sa may overflow area. Grabe pong ginagawa ng Panginoon. He is bringing a lot of hungry people to His presence. Amen! Minsan patignan mo yung katabi mo, pakisabi sa kanya, Praise God, you're here! Okay. So right now, uh, let's go straight to the Word. Hindi na po ako magpapaligoy-ligoy pa. Our text is from 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6. And we're gonna be talking about the life of David. So si King David, he is well-known character sa Old Testament. He has been quoted as well sa New Testament. And right now, there is this one, one season, or sabihin natin, one event in his life wherein meron talaga siyang may matinding pinagdaanan. So in this one verse, one just one verse, dito po natin makuha yung ating, sabihin natin yung topic for today. And it says, we read, David was greatly distressed. So, di ba? Napakagandang opening. <laughs> David was greatly distressed. Bakit? For the people spoke of stoning him. Sinong mga people yan? It was the people that followed him and the people that were with him. And now somehow tables were turned and the people now spoke of stoning him. Because all the people were bitter in soul, each for his sons and daughters. Ano po bang nangyari dito? What happened, this is a place, uh, it's a place called Ziklag. And what happened was that uh, they were supposed to fight a battle, but then when they came home, what they found out were ruins. At nawawala pa ang kanilang mga anak at mga asawa. So their wives and children were taken captive by the enemy. So pagkabalik nila sa Ziklag, wala, wala yung pamilya, wala rin yung mga ari-arian, wala, everything was taken away from them. And they were there because they were following David. At sa pag nakita nila na wala na yung pamilya nila, ayun. They, they had this bitter, they were bitter in their soul each uh, for, the, for the loss or for the uh, captivity of their sons or for, the, for their children and their wives. Pero ano po ang ginawa ni David? What did David do in this distressing situation? One line, it says, David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. So ito po ang kanyang ginawa. Pero uh, tignan po natin ha, yung, yung scenario na ito. Yung pinagdaanan niya, hindi lang yun. Actually, before he got there, he was on a run away from Saul. Because Saul was after him at gusto siyang ipapatay dahil na insecure na si Saul kay David. At uh, ang feeling niya pag na kukunin yung kingdom from him. But he didn't know that God was already anointed David to become the king. So ang nangyari, they, Saul was experiencing envy he made it a goal to apprehend and kill david that's the first that's the first situation that he had second since david was on a run sinamahan niya muna kapag-alay siya dun sa mga kalaban nakapag-alay siya sa mga philistines and what happened was that yung mga philistines nag, natatakot din sila kasi ito yung si david ang pumatay kay goliat ngayon nandun siya kasama nila so nagdadalong isip sila, para bang andali lang pag, pag yan, si David bumaliktad. Baka imbis na kasama nating lumalaban, baka tayo yung patayin yan. Huwag nyo nang isama, sabi ng mga lords of the Philistines. So they, David was also rejected by these men. And yun pong pangatlo, yun yung uuwi sila. After the rejection, uuwi sila at makikita nila yung pamilya nila wala. They were not there. And you could see the anguish in David's men. Because in the verse, uh, before the verse that we read, verse chapter, chapter 30, verse 4, it says, David and the people that were with him, they raised their voices and they wept until they had no more strength to weep. Yung kalakasan nila na deplete, yung sobrang anguish, umiiyak yung kakaiyak nila. They had no more strength to weep. Their strength was depleted because of the grief, the anguish, the bitterness that they are going through because of the capture of their families. Now, question, eto po. When we find ourselves in situations that depletes our strength, what do we do? When we find ourselves in distress, when tables are turned against us, what do we do? David strengthened himself in the Lord 
his God. And this is what we're going to talk about today. Strengthen yourself in the Lord. Amen. Strengthen yourself in the Lord. David's life tells us to strengthen ourselves in the Lord. But how do we exactly do that? Ano bang ibig sabihin? Ano bang ibig sabihin magpalakas tayo kay Lord? How do we strengthen ourselves in the Lord? So today we're going to have some practical handles. We will be learning from the Bible, from some Bible characters. Uh, nakamukha po ni David that they strengthened themselves in the Lord as well. Which brings us to our first point. So how do we strengthen ourselves in the Lord? Number one. Feed on the promises of God. Amen. Sino po dito katulad ko na kapag hindi kumain ng hihina, magkas ang kamay? I mean, darating po tayo sa point. I mean, we can do fasting. Meron pong nag-intermittent. Meron mga one-day fast, three-day fast, 21-day fast. Yan, 10-day fast, 21-day, 40-day fast. I mean, all by the grace of the Lord. Pero darating talaga yung point na gugutumin ka eh. Darating din yung point na wala ka ng lakas na tumayo. Dahil nga kailangan mo ng pagkain. Physically speaking. That's just physically speaking. But how about spiritually? Now, we make our spirit strong by feeding on the promises of God. Ang magpapalakas sa atin ay ang salita ng Diyos. Ang pangako ng Diyos. Amen! Amen! And isa pong Bible character that found himself in a hopeless situation and fed himself with the promise of God is Abraham. Father Abraham, sabi nga po. Si Abraham po, pinangakuan ng Panginoon that he will be the father of many nations. Uh, pero kung titignan niya yung sitwasyon niya at titignan niya yung asawa niya, his wife Sarah was barren and both of them, Abraham and Sarah, they were of old age. It was a hopeless case. Ilang taon na ba? Ang tanda na, 70 plus, 100, 100 na eh. Paano pa sila magkakababy noon? It was a hopeless case. But Romans chapter 4 verses 18 and 19 says, Even when there was no hope, Abraham, anong pong ginawa ni Abraham? Abraham kept hoping. Abraham kept hoping. Believing that he would become the father of many nations. Bakit? For God had said to him, dahil sinabi ni Lord sa kanya eh, For God had said to him, that's how many descendants you will have. Naniniwala siya, umaasa siya, dahil sinabi ng Panginoon sa kanya. And Abraham's faith did not weaken, even though at about 100 years of age, he figured his body was as good as dead and so was Sarah's womb. Kumbaga yung sitwasyon as good as dead na, wala na. Pero ito, verse 20. Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. Naniwala pa din. We are uh, nakailang Sundays pa lang po after ng ating series on Stronger. At uh, tatandaan nyo pa? Ano yung, una, ano yung una nating tinanggap? Paniwalaan, panghawakan at panindigan. Ulitin natin, paniwalaan. Parang nagkulang yun na. Ah. Okay. Paniwalaan, panghawakan at panindigan. Paniwalaan, panghawakan, panindigan natin ang mga pangako ng Diyos. And this is what Abraham did. He believed in the promise of the Lord. Actually, Romans 4.22 sabi, He was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever He promises. Kung anong pinangako ng Panginoon, God is able. Kung anong pinangako ng Panginoon, gagawin niya. Hebrews chapter 10.23 23, let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm for God can be trusted to keep His promise. Siya po ang nangangako na tinututuo ang pangako. Hindi niya kinakalimutan ang kanyang pangako. Amen. Amen. Palakpakan naman natin si Lord. <clears throat> Kaya we feed on the promises of God. If we want to strengthen ourselves in the Lord, we feed on His promises. Ito po application. Nangihina ka na ba? Are you in a hopeless situation? Baka kamukha po ni David, you are in a distressing situation. You go back to the promises of the Lord. God is able to do 
whatever He promise. Amen. Kaya niya, walang imposible. Makapangyarihan ang ating Diyos. Amen. Now, there is one pastor who actually counted uh, the pro- all the promises in the Bible. And according to his count, there is a grand total of 8,810 promises in the Bible. Ang dami. Out of which, that 8,000, 7,000 doon, 7,400 uh, plus promises were made by God. Now, this count may or may not be accurate. Pero ito po yung pwede natin i-take away. Ang dami. Sobrang dami ng pangako ng Diyos. And sa dinami-dami ng pangako ng Diyos sa Biblia, hindi hindi po tayo mauubusan. Kung baga, buffet yan. Unlimited yan. Amen. Panghawakan po natin yan. We feed ourselves with the promises of God every day. Yes, we have the prophetic promise. Stronger. We are stronger in the Lord. Stronger with His presence. Stronger by grace. Pero meron din tayo mga personal promises. We have this personal promise from the Lord. Um, Isaiah 41.10 Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. For I am the Lord your God. I will hold you victoriously with my right hand. Sabe. 1 Corinthians 15.58 uh, Be strong and steady. Always enthusiastic about the Lord's work. For nothing that you do for the Lord is ever useless. It's not in vain. Walang nasasayang. Amen. Though you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. Though you go through fires, you will not be burned up. For I love you, says the Lord. Amen. Anong personal promise na pinanghawakan mo pa rin hanggang ngayon? Ano yung mga pangako ng Diyos na binabalik-balikan mo? You have a promise for your family. You have a promise for that healing. You have a promise for the future. You have a promise when it comes to this decision or this, uh, this undertaking na haharapin mo. Balikan mo ang pangako ng Diyos. Balikan mo kung anong sinabi niya. Amen. Now, if we're gonna go back to David, He wrote many songs. And basahin po natin yung isang psalm na ginawa niya. Uh, it is one psalm and yet it is jam-packed with a lot of promises. We're not gonna read the whole psalm. We're just gonna read b- bits or verses of it na nandun yung mga pangako. Sobrang dami po kasi. So we're gonna read lang konte At tingnan natin, ito yung buhay niya eh. We're gonna talk about how David strengthened himself in the Lord. We can see it in his psalms. It says in Psalm 37, sabe, Psalm of David, verse 3 and 4, Trust in the Lord. Amen. Trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. So wag kang matakot. Gawin mo ko nung pinapagawa ng Panginoon, hindi ka niya pababayaan. Amen. It says in verse 4, Take delight in the Lord and He will give you your heart's desire. Again, that's a promise from the Lord. Verse 5, Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust Him and He will and He will help you. He will make your innocence radiant like the dawn and the justice of your cause will shine like the noonday sun. In other words, paglalaban ka niya. Pagtatanggol ka niya. Amen. 18. Day by day, the Lord takes care of the innocent and they will receive the inheritance that lasts forever. Wala pong pinabayaan ng Panginoon. Amen. Araw-araw, inaalagaan tayo. Amen. Pangako po niya yan. And it says 19, They will not be disgraced in hard times. Even in famine, they will have more than enough. Amen. Grabe po. Sobra. Uh, sino po di? I'd like someone here to testify. Raise your hand if you have experienced nung pandemic, yung goodness, yung provision, yung milagro, that you had more than enough. Tapos man kamay mo. Amen. Grabe, di ba? I mean, this is the promise of the Lord. He has fulfilled it. At yung itong mga ito, hindi lang siya pang one time. O, ginamit mo na ito, ha? One time mo lang pwedeng gamitin. Hindi. Ito po yung mga binabalik-balikan natin. Pangako niya ito. Verse 23, The Lord directs the step of the godly. Are you facing a major decision in your life? Are you gonna be doing something big? It says here, The Lord directs the steps of the godly. Big or small, 
Sabi po ni Lord, He delights in every detail of their lives. Though they stumble, they will never fall. For the Lord holds them by the hand. Amen. Imagine niyo, sige, palakbakan niyo si Lord. Huwag niyong pigilin ang sarili niyo. Amen. Imagine, this is just one psalm. We're just still in one psalm, Psalm 37. And it's already jam-packed with the promises of God. You can see how David strengthened himself. He was feeding himself with the promises of the Lord. Okay, ito pa isa, same psalm. Kapag nakarelate po kayo, sabihin niyo po, Amen, okay? Once I was young, now I am old. <laughs> Parang hindi lang. <laughs> ito sabi niya, once I was young, now I am old. Yet I have never seen the godly abandoned or their children begging for bread. Hallelujah! Grabe po, di ba? God will never abandon you. God will not forsake you. God will always be with you. Another, 39 and 40, the Lord rescues the godly. He is their fortress in times of trouble. The Lord helps them, rescuing them from the wicked. He saves them. Ilang beses na po tayong sinagip ni Lord, di ba? Ilang beses na. He saves them, not only that, and they find shelter in him. David fed on the promises of the Lord. This is just one psalm. And he kept on going back to the promises of God to him. Yun ang nagpalakas sa kanya. Tayo po, apply natin. Paniwalaan, panghawakan, panindigan ang mga pangako ng Diyos. In one psalm, ang ganda po sa Tagalog, sabi po, Salmo... Uh, 119 verse 50. <laughs> In Tagalog, ang sabi niya, ang inyong mga pangako, it's pertaining speaking to the Lord, ang inyong mga pangako ang siyang nagpapalakas at umaaliw sa akin sa kahirapang aking dinaranas. Meron mga pagdadaanan eh. Meron talaga tayong mga pagdadaanan. Pero yung magbibigay sa atin ng kalakasan, kaaliwan, ay ang pangako ng Diyos. We feed on the promises of God. That is how we strengthen ourselves in the Lord. That's the first pointer. Second, second, how do we strengthen ourselves in the Lord? Focus. We focus on who God is. Ulitin ko, we focus on who God is. Uh, isa pang Bible character po na nakaranas ng struggle at talaga namang na-confuse, na-frustrate, nag-question, nagalit, na was in despair. Uh, his name is Asaph or Asaph. Asaph was a singer and a musician who served in the temple worship during the time of King David. Kung bagay, isa po siya sa mga worship leader sa panahon po ni David. He authored many psalms in the book of Psalms. And yung isa pong psalm niya, Psalm 73, it is, an, it is an honest and heartwarming story of his struggle and also his faith in the Lord. Verse 2, makikita mo yung sitwasyon niya, kung ano yung, ano yung pinagdadaanan niya, ano yung mga dumadaan niya sa, ano niya, sa uh, emosyon, sa utak. It says, but as for me, Asaph is speaking here, as for me, I almost lost my footing. My feet were slipping, and I was almost gone. If you're going to read the whole, the, the first few verses, there was discontentment, there was envy, there was jealousy in the heart of Asaph. There was frustrations. Frustrated siya sa mga nangyayari. Hindi niya naintindihan kung bakit nangyayari yun. He was questioning a lot of things. In verse 13, question pa nga niya, Did I keep my heart pure? For nothing? Did I keep myself innocent for no reason? Kumbaga, nandun siya, dun sa season na yun, na, na frust frustrated na talaga siya. Hindi niya alam, hindi niya maintindihan. So, binubuhos niya ang kanyang mga questions kay Lord. Pero something changed. Uh, he kept on saying all those things until verse 16. By verse 17, something started to change. What happened? Verse 17 says, Asaph, then I went into your sanctuary, O God. Asaph went into the sanctuary of the Lord. 
into the presence of God. And he said, I finally understood the destiny of the wicked. Asaph encountered the presence of the Lord. Nung naranasan niya, nasumpungan niya ang presensya ng Panginoon. He had a lot of realizations. His perspective changed. Maraming nagbago. Pero one final thing that happened to Asaph is this. He was reminded of the simple but glorious truth that God is good. That God is good. Actually, ito po yung pinakapundasyon ng buong Psalm 73. Kasi verse 1, ito po yung sinulat ni Asaph, verse 1. Truly, may truly pa eh. Truly, truly, God is good to Israel. God is good to those whose hearts are pure. God is good. He went back to who God is, to an attribute of the Lord. More than anything, we can stand firm on the foundation of truth that God is always good and faithful. Regardless po ng sitwasyon na meron po tayo, God is and will remain good. Lahat na nag-agree sa akin, say Amen. Our situations, they do not determine the goodness of the Lord. Merong hindi po ibig sabihin na kapag may pinagdadaanan tayo, hindi na mabuti ang Panginoon. Hindi po ibig sabihin na kapag things are not going our way, hindi na mabuti ang Panginoon. Hindi. God is good. That is His attribute. Goodness is His nature. It is who He is. And since God is good, He longs to do good to His people. Buti na lang, praise God for this. Bakit? Kasi imaginein mo na lang kung meron tayong Diyos na hindi mabuti, na hindi mo alam kung ano, paano mo siya iestimahin. But the Bible says, and so many accounts, God is good. Always good and will remain good. Um, when we experience struggles like Asaph experienced, or what David experienced, or what any man or women of faith experience. Ibig sabihin, any man or woman of faith, ibig sabihin, walang exempted po sa atin, ha? Lahat po tayo, meron at meron tayong haharapin. Lahat tayo, meron at meron tayong mga tatahakin. Amen! Ito po ang kagandahan. We can count on the goodness and the faithfulness of the Lord to help us and to strengthen us. Amen? We can count on who God is. Kilala mo siya eh. He is good. And he's not just good. He is powerful. Sovereign. He knows what he is doing. Merciful. Just. These are all attributes of God. Romans 8.28 says, And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to His purposes for them. Lahat mo na nagmamahal sa Panginoon, say Amen! It says here, God will work it out for your good, for His purposes. Amen. Once again, we go back to David. Si David, how did he strengthen himself in the Lord? Makikita mo ulit sa mga Psalms na sinulat niya. And sa mga Psalms na sinulat niya, you would see him declaring the goodness of God. You would see him declaring who God is. Psalm 34, 8 to 10. Sabi niya, taste and see that the Lord is good. Back story po ah, ang dami pong psalms na sinulat ni David. Yung mga psalms niya, it's all about praising, worshiping, thanksgiving to the Lord. Pero yung mga back story nila, marami sa mga back story niya, marami siyang pinagdadaanan. Meron yung mga hinahabol yan, meron yung mga pinapatay yan, meron yung mga nagsasabay-sabay lahat ng mga kalaban niya. So many battles he faced. But then when you go back to his Psalms, you would see him declaring who God is. He was declaring the goodness of God, the faithfulness of the Lord, the power of God. Amen. And he wrote here and says here, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you, his godly people, for those who fear him will have all they need. Amen. We'll have all they need. Kailangan mo ng kalakasan, kayang bigayan ng Panginoon. 
Kailangan mo ng kapayapaan? Kayang bigayan ng Panginoon. Amen. You will have all you need. Verse 10, Even strong young lions sometimes go hungry, but those who trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. Amen. Tignan mo yung katabi mo. Tignan mo yung katabi mo. Sabihin mo sa kanya, hindi nagkukulang si Lord. <laughs> um, balikan natin si Asaph. Asaph, uh, sinulat niya yung Psalm 73. Makita mo yung emotions niya sa mga verses 2 hanggang 16. Pero makita mo yung pundasyon dun sa 1. Truly God is good. And when he encountered the presence of God, when he was reminded of the attribute of the Lord, of who God is, something changed in his heart. His perspective changed. At makikita mo yun for the rest of the Psalms. Um, in verse 25 and 26, this is a fairly known verse. Um, si Asaph po ang sumulat nito. At makikita mo yung puso niya ngayon. After he had encountered the Lord, after na alala niya, na remind siya sa goodness ng Panginoon. Sabi po dito, whom have, whom have I, kapampangan, whom have I, <laughs> whom, whom have I in heaven but you? I desire you more than anything on earth. Diba? Nawala. Nawala yung envy, jealousy, discontentment, frustrations. Sabi niya, I desire you more than anything on earth. My health may fail. My spirit may grow weak. Sino po dito, they can attest to that. Na nawawala yung kalakasan nila. Health fail, spirit grows weak. Diba? Nararanasan natin yun eh. Pero like Asaph, we can declare, God remains the strength of my heart. He is mine forever. Amen! Amen! Um, I remember it was I, last Tuesday, pastoral, kin, kinakanta namin to eh. Yung mga nakakaalam pa, alam niyo yung, alam niyo yung kantang ito, it was the, from these verses. God is the strength. Nahihiya pa sila. God is the strength of my God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Sino pong nakakalam sa kantang yan? Pataas ng kamay. Ah, okay, magkakabatch po tayo. <laughs> okay. Yung mga bago parang hindi nila alam eh. Pero may, grabe po yung kantang yun, kinuha niya talaga dito. Sabi pa, whom, ha- whom, 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 <laughs> whom have I in heaven but you? There is nothing on earth I desire besides you. My heart and my strength. Sabayan niyo ako. Many times they failed. But there is one truth that always will prevail. Nabutan natin. God is the strength of my heart. God is the strength of my heart. heart. <laughs> Pero yun nga po eh. Maraming bagay ang mawawala. Mara, pati kalakasan po natin na deplete Pero ang Panginoon, He would remain the strength of our hearts forever. He would be the one to strengthen us. God is the strength of our hearts. During the time sa alam mo, hindi mo na kaya. Hindi mo alam sa kahugot. Kay Lord ka bumalik kung sino siya. He is good. He is just. He is powerful. Amen. We strengthen ourselves in the Lord when we focus on who He is. Our God is good. He is faithful and true. Our God is all-powerful and all-wise. Our God is just. Our God is sovereign. He is still sitting on the throne and He knows what He is doing. Amen. And He is willing to help you. He is for you. He is with you. Amen. Yan po ang ating Diyos. He is all that. Grabe po siya. Kaya po babalikan natin ang pangako ng Diyos. We feed on the promises of the Lord and we focus on who God is. And lastly, how do we strengthen ourselves in the Lord? Lastly, we find help in the Lord. Simply po. We just find help in the Lord. 
Aminin po natin, di natin kaya. We admit that we are powerless and that we need His help. Kailangan natin siya. Si David po, what he went through in 1 Samuel chapter 30 was just one of the many battles that he faced. Pero over and over again, we see in his Psalms how he strengthened himself in the Lord. And let me read to you some of his Psalms again. Psalm 62, verses 1 and 2. A Psalm of David, he wrote, I wait quietly before God. For my victory comes from him. In another translation, for my help comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress where I will never be shaken. Another psalm, Psalm 40, a psalm of David. I waited patiently for the Lord to help me. And he turned to me and heard my cry. I sought the Lord, he answered. Amen. He lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on solid ground. Yung tipong hindi mo na kayang tumayo, pero siya ang nagtayo sa'yo. He has set your feet on solid ground and He's the one who steadies you as you walk along. And verse 30, David wrote, He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. And many will see what He has done and be amazed. And they will put their trust in the Lord. When we wait for the Lord, in other translations, rest on the Lord, trust in the Lord. When we wait on the Lord, rest on the Lord, trust in the Lord for His help, alam natin, sa Kanya lang talaga yung tulong na kailangan natin. Eh. Yung tulong talagang magpapalakas sa atin. Ang nangyayari po doon is that our, the status of our hearts, it shifts from overwhelmed to overflowing. Overflowing with praises and thanksgiving to God. Kaya po, balikan mo yung mga songs ni David. It was full of praises and thanksgiving to the Lord. And every time na meron siyang haharapin, he asked the Lord for help. He inquired of the Lord. Pagbabasahin niyo yung 1 Samuel, 2nd, yung mga 1 Chronicles, lagi na na David inquired of the Lord. And always, God delivers. God helps. No wonder his songs are filled with praises and thanksgiving. Makikita mo yung relasyon nilang dalawa. Ang relasyon ng Panginoon kay David sa mga psalms na isinulat niya. Yung automatic na ginagawa po ni David is go to the Lord for help. Yung automatic na ginagawa niya kapag may harapin siya, inquire of the Lord for help. God was David's ever-present help in time of trouble. Kaya natural lang po kay David na David strengthened himself in the Lord. His God. I mean, amazing yung the narrator put that. Eh. His God. You would see the relationship between David and his God. Now, what happened afterwards? What happened when after David strengthened himself in the Lord, his God? Uh, David inquired of the Lord, Lord, ano pong gagawin po namin? Would we go after the Amalekites? The Lord answered David, Sige, you go after the Amalekites and lahat mga nawala sa inyo, nawala sa iyo, you will recover them all. You will recover all that was lost. Sabi po ni, ni Lord kay David. And so, nagpadala ng tulong po si ang, ang Panginoon sa kay David through an Egyptian man. The Lord sent help through an Egyptian man that led David and his men to the Amalekites. Pagdating nila sa mga Amalekites, yung mga Amalekites nagpa-party, nag-rejoice dahil dun sa mga nakuha nila. Hindi nila alam, na-ambush sila by David. David and his men fought with the Amalekites. It lasted for the night until the next day, umabot hanggang gabi. David won. David and his men won. And chapter 30, verses 18 to 20 says, David got everything the Amalekites had taken. And nothing was missing, small or great, son or daughter, nor anything else that had been taken. David brought everything back. Lahat ng mga nawala, binalik. He also recovered all the flocks and herds, and his men drove them ahead of the other flock. At yung mga tauhan po niya, yung mga his men that were speaking of stoning him, what happened? They said, this plunder belongs to David. Ay, yung plunder na ito, hindi na sa atin. Kay David niya. So bumalik ulit. Yung respeto nandoon. The plunder belongs to David, they said. Everything was turned around in his favor again. Pero balikan po natin, what did David do during that distressing situation? 
Hindi niya alam kung anong gagawin niya. David strengthened himself in the Lord, his God. His God. Amen. Tayo po. Sino pang unang nilalapitan po natin kapag nangangailangan tayo ng tulong? Sa mga panahon na kung saan may haharapin tayo, alam mo yun, alam mo yun when you're gonna face something, iniisip mo pa lang, nahubusan ka na ng lakas eh. Kaya ka naging ng tulong. Kaya no ka hingi ng tulong. Some, what they do is that they escape. They feel that, oh, they have to do this para somehow mapahinga lang ng konti, lumakas ang Or they lean on other food, entertainment, other things, things of this world. Some to people. Pero aminin po natin, all of these things, even people, they fail. It won't be able to sustain us. Ang tunay na kalakasan ay galing po sa Panginoon. Tunay na tulong, help that really counts, it, it, that would affect everything in our lives, comes from the Lord. David had this personal relationship with God. Sabi, the Lord, his God, strengthened himself in the Lord, his God. Tayo rin po, God wants this personal, personal relationship with us. That it, where in times na may harapin tayo, we would turn to him for help. And David did that every time. Kaya lalo silang close eh. Same thing with us. God wants that intimacy with us. God wants us to turn to Him for help. And ito po yung tendency po, kung sino daw madalas puntahan mo for tulong or uh, kung saan mo nilalagay yung sarili mo para nun magkaroon ka ng peace or kalakasan or whatever, uh, may tendency yun ang maging Diyos-Diyosan po natin. So, i-assess natin yung puso natin, saan ba ako unang-unang pumunta kapag kailangan ko ng tulong, kapag kailangan ko ng kalakasan? Pumunta ba ako sa cellphone ko? Mag-scroll ako? Punta ba ako sa TV? Manood ako Netflix? Punta ba ako sa ganitong tao? Doon ako magpapalakas? David strengthened himself in the Lord, his God. And like David, may you also strengthen yourself in the Lord, your God. Amen. Amen? Let's all stand. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Strengthen yourself in the Lord. How? By feeding on the promises of God, by focusing on who He is, and by finding hope in Him, by finding help in Him. Let's all bow our heads, close our eyes. If, meron po kayong, if you're facing a situation, distressing situation, or maybe there have been some thoughts in your head that has been depleting your strength, can you raise your hand? Let us pray for you. Sige, taas mong yung kamay. Father God, Lord, you see these hands who are undergoing situations, Lord? Maybe with them or their families, I ask for your supernatural strength to be upon them. Panalangin ko po masumpungan nila ang inyong presensya. Not just here, Lord, but in their homes. When they're coming and going in the places that they go to. I pray, Lord, that they would be sensitive and they would be made aware of your nearness to them. That you are for them, that you are with them, Lord, that you have never left them nor forsaken them. I pray, Father, as well for wisdom. Lord, kung meron po silang mga kailangan ayusin, asikasuhin, and they've been uh, battling it, Lord God, with confusion, di nila alam kung anong kailangan gawin. I pray, God, for wisdom that is from you. Wisdom to tackle this, Lord. Clarity, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. I pray, Lord God, nagpapakumbaba po kami sa inyo. Naghihingi po kami ng tulong. Kailangan po namin ng inyong tulong. Kailangan po namin ng inyong tulong, Panginoon. Lord, bless your people, God. Bless your people, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Father God, right now, Lord, encourage your people with your promises. Lord, I pray, Lord, na Holy Spirit, speak to them. Remind them of the many promises that you have for them. The Holy Spirit is reminding you right now that you do not need to fear. You, need, you do not need to worry. Be strong and courageous for I am with you, says the Lord. Uh, that I have held you in the palm of my hand that I will not let you go. That I love you, says God. I'll take care of your family. Trust in me, says God. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am the God of families. 
That is His promise and that is who He is. And right now, just trust in Him. Wait for His help. Trust in Him. Amen. Let's raise our hands to Him and praise Him. Hallelujah. Let's praise God. Christ to die on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. Kung pag-uusapan po natin yung bagong buhay, bagong puso, kalakasan, ever-present help, all these blessings were made available to us only because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And if you may allow me for us to strengthen ourselves, fix your eyes on Jesus. He is the author and perfecter of our faith. And in Hebrews 12, ang sabi po, if you find yourself flagging in your faith, go over the story, the story of Jesus Christ. Go over it item by item, that long litany of hostility. Balikan mo kung anong ginawa ng Panginoon para sa'yo. At kung ikaw ay bago ngayon, hindi mo pa alam kung anong ginawa ng Panginoon para sa'yo. Let me tell you right now, Jesus Christ loves you so much that He died on the cross for you. You are, we are not worthy. We are sinners. And yet, He loves us so much to the point that He gave His life for us. And with that comes new life. With that comes new heart. With that comes the blessings of heaven. At ano po yung hinihingi sa atin? Hinihingi niya sa atin, Nak, tama na. Huwag na yung ikaw laging nasusunod. Kasi alam mo naman, palpak lagi yan eh. Alam mo naman, na yung mga yan, it would lead you to death. But I have come to give you life and life to the fullest. Surrender your life to me, says the Lord. Surrender your heart to me, says God. Turn away from your old life and turn to me. Let me be the one to rule your life. Hindi po, hindi po tayo ma-exempt sa mga trials and testings. Pero, pero, mag-iiba ang ating perspective. Mag-iiba ang ating puso dahil kasama na po natin siya. Siya na po ang nangunguna sa ating mga buhay. Amen. If you are that person, if you want to surrender your life to Jesus, if you want to give your life to Jesus, th- this is your decision, raise your hand. If you want to make that decision, raise your hand. Raise your hand. This is an intelligent decision. Father, let me pray for you. Father, you see these people who have raised their hands. Lord, deciding to give their lives to you. Lord, we are praying for them. We ask you, Lord God, that make their relationship grow stronger in you. Panalangin po namin. They would uh, know how wide, how deep, how great your love is. Show them who you are. Lalo po nilang maranasan ng iyong pagmamahal, ang iyong kapangyarihan, mga kasagutan sa panalangin. And I pray, Father, and I pray, Father, that from this day onwards, Lord, talaga naman true commitment with you, Lord. 
Let it be real, Lord. Let it be real, Father. Bless them, God. Bless them. Bless their hearts. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Give Him praise. Amen. Sino pong lumakas? Amen. Uh, before you leave, before we leave, kindly look at your neighbor. Pakibigay yung pinakamaganda mong ngiti. Yan. Ginagamit din po ni Lord yan para palakasin ang bawat isa. Amen. Amen. Okay, raise your hands. I'm gonna bless you with a prayer. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you. The Lord bless you with His favor, His peace, His joy. The Lord bless you with miracles and answered prayers. The Lord make you strong.